I'm thinking out loud today and with ascension very much in mind Psalm 47 says God is gone up with a merry noise and the Lord with the sound of the trump. Music has been used to celebrate events from Old Testament times but I heard that though churches may possibly open under constraints there would be no singing just as there should be no coughing or sneezing. So this week, something lighter to raise a smile or two. A look at some comical aspects of church music. For not all is as it would seem. How about this paraphrase? It comes from the Darley Parish Magazine of May 1997. Dear Lord and Father of mankind, forgive our foolish ways. For most of us, when asked our mind, admit we still most pleasure find in hymns of ancient days. In hymns of ancient days. The simple lyrics for the start of many a modern song are far too trite to touch the heart and shrine no poetry or art and go on much too long and go on much too long breathe through the beats of praise guitar thy coolness and thy balm let drum be dumb bring back the lyre enough of earthquake, wind and fire, let's hear it for some calm, let's hear it for some calm. If you've seen the film Oh What a Lovely War, you may remember the Sunday morning church parade singing what a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. When the camera zoomed in on one soldier with an operatic tenor voice singing, When this blinking war is over. Except his language was more soldier-like. Now, choir boys and choir girls are notorious for singing their versions of hymns and scoring points if the vicar or organist doesn't notice. How about this? The cattle are blowing the baby away. Or... Most highly favoured lady, Gloria, comes out like this. Most highly flavoured gravy, Gloria. Now I've got a slightly naughty joke, so cover your ears if you don't want to hear it. To understand it, though, I need to say that a spinet was a quiet harpsichord-like instrument used in the 17th and 18th centuries in houses rather than in concert halls or churches. A boy writing an exam essay on the life of Bach correctly wrote, Bach was married twice and had 22 children and kept a spinster in the attic on which he practised. I love that joke. My wife, who played in the National Youth Orchestra as a schoolgirl, 
told me words they put to orchestral repertoire they were playing. I can never hear Tchaikovsky's Fifth Symphony now without remembering what she told me. I'll not repeat it, A, because it's impolite, and B, it'll spoil your enjoyment of the work forever. But it starts, I've lost the key to the toilet. Harold Wilson told a story about his visit to a primary school assembly when he was Prime Minister. Walking down the line of pupils reciting the Lord's Prayer, he was rather taken aback to hear a little boy say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Harold be thy name. Children usually have an acute sense of justice or injustice. And one of the most powerful musical protests I witnessed occurred at a girls' school. For the final even song of the school year, the leavers were allowed to choose their favourite hymns, their canticles and an anthem. As usual, the list went to the head for her blessing, but she didn't like one hymn they wanted. I vow to thee my country. She said it wasn't explicitly religious, which is a fair point. However, the girls were very disappointed because it was one of their favourite tunes. At the end of the service, I played the head and the staff out of chapel and expected to see empty pews when I got off the organ stool. But every girl was still in her place. Quietly, a hum started, growing as more joined in. No words. Just humming the melody of I vow to thee my country. And when they finished, they stood up and left in a dignified manner. They didn't sing the hymn, but they did perform the tune that meant so much to them. A fair amount of entertainment surrounds weddings, perhaps because the couple are new to churchy things and are easily confused. Like the groom who, when asked for a favourite hymn, replied, Lord of all um, uh, hopelessness. And another couple who offered, Fight the good fight with all thy might. I was summoned to the home of the bride's mother to discuss the music for her daughter's wedding and the daughter knew some music she said look she said, I want to come in to Takata I said well yes you can but if it's this one I said that's the Vidor Toccata and it's usually used to go out to because it's quite long. No, she said, not that one, not that one. She said the other one. Oh, I thought this one. Yes, yeah, she said, that's the one. Ah, I said, that's the bark. So you want to come into that? Yes, she said. Well, I said, the church where you're going to be married is a very short church. It's only a tiny church. And the bark goes on for probably a couple of minutes. And it doesn't easily cut. I can't stop at one point and jump to another point. So you'd be standing at the door for a very long time before you started to move. And she had a good think. And she said, now, she said, now, would it work if you played very quickly and I walked very slowly? Anyway, here's a joke. Here's a joke. It is a joke. I'm not aiming it at anybody at all. Three parish officials died and stood before God. He asked the warden, What do you believe in? And she answered, To see the best in everyone, to mediate and to motivate. Excellent, said God. Come and sit at my right hand. 
he asked the same of the treasurer. I believe in honesty and integrity and working quietly behind the scenes to enable the work of the parish. Very good, said God. Come and sit on my left. Of the organist, he asked, and what do you believe in? The organist replied, I believe you're sitting in my seat. And now a prayer for good humour. Prayer was written by Sir Thomas More. Grant me, O God, good digestion, and also something to digest. Grant me a healthy body, and the necessary good humour to maintain it. Grant me a simple soul that knows to treasure all that is good and that doesn't frighten easily at the sight of evil, but rather finds the means to put things back in their place. Give me a soul that knows no boredom, grumblings, sighs and laments, nor excess of stress because of that obstructing thing called I. Grant me, O Lord, a sense of good humour. Allow me the grace to be able to take a joke, to discover in life a bit of joy, and to be able to share it with others. Amen. Now let us join in the prayer which Jesus gave us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen. And I hope you remember if we do meet in church and can't sing, hum very quietly. <laughs>